No, not her. Number four, the timeline. Now I couldn't do this review without discussing the most controversial element of the film. The complete eradication of the Star Trek timeline as we knew it. So does that mean that all of Star Trek doesn't exist now? Well, I have an answer. The answer is, no one has an answer. Also, who cares? If you ask me, Star Trek was totally ruined in what I consider to be the worst episode of Star Trek ever. Parallels. In this episode, Worf passes through some kind of space thing that makes him aware each time that the universe fractures into other parallel universes. We discover that the universe fractures into other universes like every five minutes or whatever. In the end, we see thousands of enterprises from other timelines all converging together. The fact that an incalculable amount of yous are existing in other timelines, and that you're not unique, and actually kind of disposable? Gosh, that's like the most shocking and devastating thing that you could ever discover. This episode is so sloppy and lazy that it makes me want to vomit up shit. So after seeing the schlock, I'm not sure what the big deal is with Star Trek. Just imagine it like this. We can all pretend that the original timeline continued on in its own parallel universe. And that we're just watching another universe. Whatever. Another universe. Perhaps in another dimension. Occupying the same space at the same time. Do you feel like you were meant for something better? Something special? Oh, I guess that kind of devalues the whole destiny thing. Oh well. Oh wait. If we went with that idea, then we'd also have to agree that those universes started fracturing apart as well. Wow, that really makes the whole destiny thing not so special. Okay, scratch that. Let's look at it from another perspective. And this is even more devastating. I'm sure as science fiction fans, most of you are probably familiar with the Drake Equation. It's a mathematical formula that takes into account all the possible variables, and comes up with a number of potential planets with intelligent life on it. I have a similar equation, which I'll call the Plinkett Equation. This equation will measure how often history is being changed in Star Trek alone. First, we'll take the number of times a potentially history-altering time travel event has taken place in each of the Star Trek series. Now, considering how often time travel events have occurred in just the sliver of the Federation that we've been witness to, we must now include the probability that similar events have occurred on other Starfleet ships with other crews. Next, we'll account for other space-faring civilizations in the Alpha Quadrant, who may have also had their share of time-traveling events. Next, we'll include the whole Milky Way galaxy and multiply our estimates. Remember when the dad from that 70s show was changing history constantly for hundreds of years? Yeah, plug that shit in. Next, we'll multiply the findings by the number of known galaxies in the universe, and then we'll have our result. Ready? History is changing every 23 millionths of a second. And the time it took me to say that, history has changed 186 million times. In fact, you no longer exist. Now when the Guatnu and the Delta Quadrant travels back in time to save his house from going into foreclosure, does it affect the events in the Alpha Quadrant? I don't know, maybe. Janeway jumped into the Delta Quadrant and then tried to change time from there, so maybe. It's all theoretical anyway. So is time travel for that matter. You think J.J. Abrams knows? Or that guy? Or that guy with the money? None of them know. Wait, something's wrong. Something's changed. The timeline just changed. Oh no, my first cat is now alive again somehow. She's taken that money she won in Atlantic City and started some kind of media empire. And now she's trying to murder me! <clears throat> um, anyway, so if you stand back and look at Star Trek and consider all the weird and fucked up shit that's happened, none of this matters. The people that made this film will attempt to explain the whole timeline thing and try to make us feel better that they didn't erase anything. But the truth of the matter is that they don't have an answer, and they don't really care at all. So if you get worked up about this, it won't make any difference, because as I said before, there's not an answer. They just wanted to make a film that would make a bunch of money. Period. 
It's like getting all worked up about the Star Wars prequel. Oh, wait.